Let's all share the good news with the Holy Family Daily Gospel Reflection Podcast with your host, Yvette Celeste. And I'm Haley. Hello and welcome. Welcome to the Holy Family Daily Gospel Reflection. My name is Yvette Celeste. And I'm Haley. And this is Haley. And we are going to open and share the gospel with you and your family. And why don't we get started with prayer? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, glory to you, O God in the highest. Glory to you, O Lord. We give you thanksgiving and praise, for you are Lord. Lord, as we lift our hearts to you, we ask for the Holy Spirit to lift us all in your presence, to lift us always in our hearts and minds, and in every area of our lives, and in in that of our family and that of everyone in the world. In the sanctifying grace of your son, Jesus Christ, in your mercy that endures forever that we praise and in your goodness, which is everlasting, that we rejoice in. We give thanks to you, O Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. As we lift our hearts to you, O Lord, we sing praise to you. And we will always do so. As we lift our own special intentions into the sacred heart of the Lord. Haley, do you have any special intentions that you'd like to place in the sacred heart of the Lord? You. Thank you. All children. Very good. Okay. And my parents. Very well. Okay. So we lift all children in the world and especially in our own country, especially in Ukraine. Now, we lift up every child in the world, but especially those who are displaced, especially those who are in another country displaced because of war in whatever area that may be. We pl- we pray over Ukraine, we pray over Russia, we pray for a change of heart dear Lord, from Putin. We pray for your holy mercy, that divine mercy that endures forever, that knows no end for Putin. And we ask for conversion. We ask for your holy, holy divine mercy, your infinite merits, that of the sacred heart of our Lord Jesus Christ and the immaculate heart of Mary, your graces and the Holy Spirit to help all hearts here. The glorious call of the Lord is for everyone to return to the Lord and Jesus who loves us, who asks us to return to him always, is with us. And we lift all areas of conversion into the sacred heart of the Lord. We lift all areas of metanoia into the sacred heart of the Lord. We lift all areas of the world and we ask for the blessed mother's prayers over us all. Immaculate heart of Mary, pray for us. As we lift every area of the world into the sacred heart of the Lord, we ask for your Holy Spirit, Lord. Your Holy Spirit, glory to you, O Lord. We ask for your graces that opens our heart and opens our eyes and opens our ears to greater love for one another, and holy adoration of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We pray for conversion. We pray for metanoia. And what does that mean? It means a change of heart, a complete change of heart, lifting their entire heart into the sacred heart of Jesus himself. And Jesus, who loves us, who welcomes us to him in every moment, his divine mercy awaits us all. As we lift our hearts to the Lord, we just sing praise to Jesus in his holy name. Amen. And we love to pray for, and we ask for the prayers of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, the Holy Family, St. Joseph. We ask for the prayers of the saints and the holy men and women who pray for all of us. And we ask for the prayers and holy intercession of the angels and archangels led by St. Michael, the archangel, in a very holy embrace to be with us all. And in any area that we're listening, in any 
place that we're listening to this podcast, we ask for you here and to fill wherever we are listening, our homes, our workspaces, even our cars, (laughs) and to guide us to intercede over us. And we sure thank the Lord for sending his angels and archangels to be with us. Lord, we praise you, and we always will. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. Lord, we praise you, and we always will. In Jesus' name, amen. Beautiful. Today's gospel we receive from the Gospel of John, chapter 5, verses 1 through 16. You can find today's reading on the USCCB website for... March 29th, 2022. There was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem at the Sheep Gate a pool called in Hebrew Bethesda, with five porticos. In these lay a large number of ill, blind, lame, and crippled, and crippled. One man was there who had been there for 38 years. When Jesus saw him dying there, and knew that he had been ill for a long time. He said to him, Do you want to be well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool. When the water is stirred up while I am on my way, someone else gets down there from before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your mat and walk. Immediately the man became well and took up his mat and walked. Now that day was a Sabbath, so the Jews said to the man, who was cured, it is a Sabbath and is not lawful for you to carry your mat. He answered them, the man who made me well told me, take up your mat and walk, they asked him. Who is this man who told you take it up and walk? The man who was healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had slipped away since there was a crowd there. After this, Jesus found him in a temple area, and said to him, Look, you are well, do not send any more, so that nothing worse may happen to you. The man went and told the Jews that Jesus was the one who had made him well. Therefore, the Jews began to persecute Jesus because he did this on the Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, thank you, Haley, by the way, for reading that. You're welcome. Okay, as we lift our hearts to the Lord, we sing praise to God in the highest. And we turn the word into prayer and praise in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Glory to you, O Lord, in the highest. Glory to you, O Lord. We sing praise and thanksgiving to you for your holy and living word that provides life for us all. As we lift our hearts to you, we give you thanksgiving and praise, and we ask for your living water to pour through us all, breathe on us all in every area of the world, Lord, and shower us, pour forth your holy living water for renewal and for all to turn to you fully to say yes to the Lord, to say yes to the glorious call of the Lord, and that is to receive you in the Eucharistic celebration, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we ask for you now in a very spiritual communion until such time we can receive you in a sacramental communion. And we thank you, O Lord, in your hearing, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. In Jesus' name, amen. Beautiful. Now, Jesus has just performed his second sign in Cana with the royal official with his son who was ill in Capernaum and who was near death and spoke over him even at a distance. Now, this is the royal official who had faith and trust in the Lord. And after this, this is where our gospel picks up is there was a feast of the Jews And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And the feast was suggested as the Pentecost feast. The connection of that feast with the giving of the law to Moses on Sinai, attested later in Judaism, may already have been in the first century. The feast could also be Passover, 
John stresses that this day was a Sabbath. Now, where it says sheep gate, in the footnotes of the Bible, it also says that the gate, the sheep gate, is supplied on the grounds that there must have been a gate in the northeast wall of the temple area where the animals for sacrifice were brought in. And the five porticos is a pool excavated in Jerusalem, actually has five porticos. The Caesarean and Western recensions followed by the Vulgate add that waiting for the movement of water, apparently an intermittent spring in the pool bubbled up occasionally and the turbulence was believed to cure. Now, toward the end of the 2nd century in the West and among the 4th century Greek fathers, an additional verse was known for, from time to time, an angel of the Lord used to come down to the pool, into the pool, and the water was stirred up. So the first one to get in after the stirring of the water was healed of whatever disease afflicted him. And the angel was a popular explanation of the turbulence and the healing powers attributed to it. This verse is missing from all the early Greek manuscripts and the earliest versions, including the original Vulgate. Now, Rob Corzine has mentioned in his reflection that this is also a precursor of baptism. As Jesus has made the connection that this man's is also, that his illness is also a cause of his sin, Rob Corzine had mentioned that Uh, This is the 38 days that he's sick is also reflective of the Israelites in the wilderness as they came into the promised land. This is also a revealing of the Lord's glory that Jesus can heal the flesh of our sins, that Jesus can heal our flesh even when we are sick or ill from sin. It's sin that This man has been carried for a very long time, as the Israelites had wandered in the desert for a very long time. So also this man has been waiting a very long time for his illness to be cured. And that's where Jesus comes in. This man doesn't know Jesus at all, but the Lord knows him. And the Lord who knows us all, understands our hearts, and thank the Lord that he is with us at all times. He understands that this man has been ill for a very long time, as it is written, and he asks him, do you want to be well? Now, do you want to be well is also a question for all that have not partaken in baptism. And for us, it's an invitation to trust in the Lord as well. The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up. When I'm on my way, someone gets down there before me. Jesus, who is Lord of all. Jesus has the authority to heal our sins, to heal our flesh, and to help us to walk in a state of grace. And that's what's being offered here is the divine mercy of the Lord is shown for his glory. Now, Jesus, who heals this man, this man who doesn't understand who has healed him, is not able to witness at first before the Jews who has healed him. He has no understanding, really, of who Jesus is or who Jesus was. Now, that just goes again for us all that Jesus can heal anyone and bring anyone to him. And Jesus can lift all hearts to him, no matter their belief, no matter how they've been brought up. The Lord is not limited by our circumstances. He's not limited by any person's circumstance. He is the Lord of all. And that includes Lord of the Sabbath, as this was done on a Sabbath. And this is where the persecution of the Jews come in. They have understood that this man has been healed. They, After Jesus says, rise, take up your mat and walk. And immediately this man became well. He took up his mat and walked. And as it was on a Sabbath, the Jews said to the man who was cured, it's Sabbath, it's not lawful you to, for you to carry your mat. And he answered them, the man who made me well told me, take up your mat and walk. They asked him, who is the man that told you to take up your mat and walk? Who is this man who told you? The man who was healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had slipped away since there was a crowd there. 
And it looks good for the crowd, for the crowd knew who Jesus was. This man had not yet asked the Lord or had understood who was in front of him. Yet this was for the Lord's glory. And as Jesus had slipped away from the crowds, Jesus, who came back to this man in the temple area, said to him, Look, you are well, do not sin anymore, so that nothing worse may happen to you. Then the man was able to witness to the Jews. He told the Jews that Jesus was the one who made him well. Therefore, the Jews began to persecute Jesus because he did this on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered them, My father is at work until now, so I am at work. This is Jesus revealing that the father is the heavenly father, who is his father and ours, as we all receive the spirit of adoption in baptism we receive the sanctifying grace of the Holy Spirit. We receive in reconciliation the divine mercy of the Lord. We receive all of the graces that the Lord has given to us. And as Jesus reveals the Heavenly Father in this gospel, and yet still as he's revealing that the Heavenly Father is his Father, the Jews are still not recognizing him and have tried all the more, it says, to kill him because he not only broke the Sabbath, but he's also called God his own father, making himself equal to God. This is beyond their understanding. Jesus, who loves us so very much, comes to us in a state of spiritual weakness, seeks us out when we have gone astray, and is with us every moment of our lives. Jesus, who loves us so very much, welcomes us all to him. And as in the footnotes where it says, Look, you are well, do not sin anymore, so that nothing worse may happen to you. While the cure of the paralytic in Mark 2, Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 12, is associated with the forgiveness of sins, Jesus never drew a one-to-one -one connection between sin and suffering. And that the Sabbath observant was based on God's resting on the seventh day. Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath. There is something greater than the Sabbath here. And that is what Jesus had divine authority over, but also has the authority to heal our flesh, to heal this man's flesh, which was a cause of his sin. And as Jesus says, look, sin no more so that nothing worse may happen to you, he is giving him the grace and the divine mercy to be able to walk anew, to be able to walk in new life. For Jesus, who has come for us all, is exactly doing the same for us, to walk in a state of grace, is asking us to walk in a state of grace, to be blameless and to come to him for every reason that we may have as well. Asking the Lord for his mercy on behalf of even others. If we attend reconciliation regularly, if we attend mass regularly, attend, we receive the Lord regularly, let's lift up our rosaries, let's lift up our prayers, let's offer our rosaries for penance on behalf of those for penance, which is what Mother Mary asks us to do, is an... um. Penance, which is an act of love, lifting up your rosary for penance is an act of love, and it is also a spiritual work of mercy, so that we can pray for others to receive the graces, the mercy, the divine mercy, the infinite merits of the sacred heart of the Lord, and the immaculate heart of Mary, and the Holy Spirit to help all hearts turn in metanoia. Let's pray for those who persecute others. Let's pray for those who persecute the Lord, for they may not understand how wonderful it is to receive the Lord. In fact, let's invite the Holy Spirit to do that now. Jesus, we praise you and we ask to place your Holy Spirit on those who may be hardened, on Putin, on those who may not understand who may not love, who may not praise, may not adore the Lord, who may not understand how wonderful it is to receive you in your body and blood and to ask for your divine mercy and how healing this is to be reconciled 
to you. Lord, we pray for your Holy Spirit over every hardened heart. We ask for your Holy Spirit, Lord, over every area of the world, wherever anyone is asking for healing. And we pray especially over Ukraine. We ask for healing for Ukraine. We ask for healing for Russia. We ask for healing for every area of the world where there is persecution. Lord, help all hearts to hear, help all hearts to open, and help all hearts come to you fully in reconciliation, reconciling their heart, in metanoia, in a change of heart. Because as we ask in this way, Lord, we have received your divine mercy, and we praise you that divine mercy is in every heart. All hearts can glorify your mercy, and we ask for your endless mercy for every area of the world, especially where there is persecution and where they persecute our Lord, where they persecute you, O Lord. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Beautiful. Jesus, who is Lord of the Sabbath, asks us to act on his very living word. And how we act on today's very living word today is to trust in the Lord with all matters, giving thanks to the Lord for all healing, and witnessing to others what the Lord has done for all of us. As Jesus comes into our lives, as Jesus comes into our hearts, let's share what the Lord has done for us all for even those who may not love, may not praise, and may not adore the Lord, can hear the good news. In Jesus' name, amen. And as a very special witness for the Lord, as I ask in the Holy Spirit how I can witness for Him, Jesus has shown me that He is truly present in the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. Every sacrament has been an eye-opener. Every sacrament has been a life-changing sacrament, and it always will be. And this is because we receive the Holy Spirit in baptism, the sanctifying grace of our Lord in baptism. We receive the first installment of His Holy Spirit that grafts us into His holy presence in baptism. We receive the divine mercy of the Lord. We receive absolution for our sins, wiping the slate clean, and the divine mercy of the Lord in our hearts. And it's Jesus who does the beckoning. Jesus who comes to us, who calls to us, is welcoming us to him. As we come to him in reconciliation, we come and heal our hearts. We lift our hearts to the Lord, asking for his mercy. And that is beyond, it's beyond measure the amount of mercy that we receive as a result. The graces that you receive from asking the Lord for his mercy is incredible and is healing, which is why reconciliation is called the healing sacrament. In the Eucharist, the Lord has assisted, um, the Lord has helped me to understand that he is truly present. I can feel the peace of our Lord emanating from the blessed sacrament. And this is because the power of the Holy Spirit comes down in every mass and transubstantiates the host into the very body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is what the Lord has given us to do, is to partake in his very body and blood, the Eucharistic celebration. Now, as I was in adoration, they were exposing the Blessed Sacrament. And the adoration is where we adore the presence of the Lord. Now, adoration is where we adore the Blessed Sacrament. We adore the Lord. When I was younger, I went up to a deacon and I said, what do we do in adoration? And he held up both hands and he said, we just adore the Lord. We adore the Lord. And he just kept repeating that, Yvette, we adore the Lord. And that's exactly what we do because he is present in the Blessed Sacrament. He is present in the body and blood 
that is transubstantiated in every Catholic Mass. There is a miracle that occurs in every Catholic Mass. And that is something else that the Lord has shown me, is that His Spirit truly, truly does come down upon the gifts at the altar and transubstantiates the host into the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Just as Jesus was able to transubstantiate the water into wine in the wedding of Cana, so also he is able to trans transubstantiate the wine into his own blood. And that's what he gave us to do to do in the institution of the Eucharist. Take this, eat this, this is my body, which will be given up for you. Drink this, this is my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant that will be shed for you and for all. Do this in memory of me. And again, in the Bread of Life discourse, Amen, Amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Lord, we ask for you to open every heart to share your to share your good news to share your gospels and to invite all to receive you in the eucharistic celebration that is available in every catholic mass eucharist is the holiest matrimony we could possibly partake in because we receive the lord we consume his body he gives us his body and as a result, we give him ourselves. We are the bride, and he is the bridegroom. And this is an incredible sacrament that we can partake in daily that can only be given by the power of the Holy Spirit, the Lord himself, and is only given in every Catholic Mass. It is not just a symbol. It is not a memorial. Through the hands of the ordained priest and the power of the Holy Spirit, we receive the actual body and blood of our Lord, and that is who we adore in the blessed adoration, the blessed sacrament. So here I was in adoration, and they were exposing the blessed sacrament, and the deacon candidate was opening the uh, tabernacle door where the blessed sacrament was, and as he was opening the tabernacle door, this incredible heavenly peace and this light started emanating, just flowing from the tabernacle door. As he opened the tabernacle door a little bit more, the heavenly peace and the, the peace that surpasses all understanding and this heavenly, incredible, beautiful light open, just filled the room. The more he opened the tabernacle door, the more that this heavenly peace and light just filled the room. And that is because Jesus is present in the Eucharist. As he opened the tabernacle door fully, there was even more light and more peace, which filled all of us who were sitting there, who were... um celebrating the Blessed Sacrament, who were adoring the Blessed Sacrament, and then the vision was over after that. But it was just an incredible moment. There are many Eucharistic miracles miracles that you can search for, one of which is the miracle of Buenos Aires. There are others. If you want to search for the miracles of the Eucharist, this is Jesus revealing he is truly present in the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is truly present in the Eucharist. And that is what is so very incredible, is that Jesus is still showing us today. He is with us, and he is present in the Eucharist, and that he wants us to consume the Eucharist, which provides life for our bodies, life for our families, and he loves us. Now, in confirmation, this is another sacrament that I have also received, and this is the 
anointing of the Holy Spirit. This is the seal of the Holy Spirit, which can only be given by God himself, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And the further installment of the Holy Spirit, the very presence of our Lord, a further installment, we receive the fire of the Holy Spirit. And that we receive at baptism as well. We receive the sanctifying grace at baptism and the first installment and yet another installment in confirmation. And what a life-changing sacrament that is. If you haven't partaken of any of the sacraments, they're all given to us in the Gospels. And you are invited. Please, by all means, register. Make haste to do so. You are invited to partake in the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's everyone because all families belong to Jesus. All families belong to the Lord. And it is through his gospels that we receive the glorious call of the Lord to receive him fully and to receive every sacrament. That's what the Lord came for. This is all a precursor and a grace that we receive a precursor for eternal salvation. This is what the Lord came for us all as he redeems us all. He is showing us the way to the promised land that he has prepared for us all. And that is our eternal wedding banquet with the bridegroom. Come to Mass and sign up, register, call your local Catholic church, inquire of the sacraments that are available from the Lord himself, make haste to register, come to Mass. In the meantime, come regularly and faithfully. As we do so, we are acting on the very word of God that asks us to keep, remember to keep the Sabbath holy. This is the Lord's Mass, and this is how the Lord has given us to worship. In Jesus' name, amen. And may God bless you. Haley, do you have any words of wisdom for everyone? God loves you. God does love you. He loves you. He loves me. And he loves everyone in the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. May he look kindly upon us and grant us his peace. Lord, grant us all your rest. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bye, families. May God bless you. Bye. Bye, 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 bye